Hello everyone. Uh, today I'm going to take you through a very interesting paper, which is titled "A Robot Walks Into a Bar," and uh, the main uh, objective of this paper is to explore whether language models can serve as a creativity support tools uh, for comedy. Uh, and the topic is itself very interesting because uh, it uh, <clears throat> it dives deep into uh, whether stand-up uh, comedians. can actually f- uh, find a lot of uh, uh lot of usefulness with the help of large language models to generate their script and create their content so what these people have done is that they have interviewed uh, 20 professional comedians uh who perform live shows in front of audiences and uh, they have conducted a survey which consisted of uh, a human computer interaction uh, questionnaire and through that questionnaire uh, they try to understand whether these people are actually being helped by uh, by chat gpt or not so it, it was it was a workshop termed as ai uh, ai and comedy together the idea was to explore whether uh, any any form of biases or anything uh, which is uh, which is at the heart of these large language models it affects the generation of uh, of the comedy content and uh, while you are watching this video just try to think about what all factors might influence a comedian writing a comedy you know so uh, whichever stand up comic uh, you really like which part of the jokes do you like you might be relating with their personal story with their personal context you might be relating with the type of the humor whether it's a dark humor it's bit of an offensive humor uh, so every comedian has their own different style and uh, it is it is that style which has made them popular so here what we are trying to explore is itself very interesting because uh, here is a uh, piece of software which has evolved through let's say uh, a, a training on a large set of data large corpus of data and now we are trying to uh, you know generate comedy with that so so uh, that yeah so so this topic really interested me and i wanted to uh, help you guys understand what i learned uh, after reading this uh, this particular paper okay so uh, let's look at uh, it it in detail uh, now the the main subject of enquiry is whether machine learning and humor can be combined together and it's it's uh, it's a very fundamental challenge because uh, as they say humans are the only known species that use humor for making others laugh uh, and and uh, humor has evolved through millions of years of evolution uh, and and how it has evolved is that it gives us the capability of uh, maybe connecting with the fellow human better uh, and and humor is not just uh, in in what you say but it's 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 a complete mixture of the facial uh, the facial expressions the context of uh, the words and and everything so it's really hard to uh, pen down exactly why this particular piece of comedy made you laugh uh, and and that's why the difficulty of this task is really uh, really quite high uh okay so uh, so so these people had certain hypothesis which they wanted to test uh before uh, they conducted their study the first hypothesis was that whether llms are uh, actually biased and and whether that plays out uh, in in the comedy which llms have generated so these these biases can be of two types gender and racial biases um and they have listed down all all these biases in detail so some of these biases can be representational bias itself um uh, and and some of these can be extrinsic biases which are uh, which are manifested as a downstream consequence of these biased models uh basically biases can uh, affect the way the script is generated a lot because if you have a bias towards a specific religion or a specific gender uh then then your jokes will always be in a specific type so biases uh narrows you and and if large language models are indeed biased that will come out in the script that was their hypothesis it remains to be checked whether it's true or not 
potential censorship of uh, speech labeled as offensive so comedians often uh, use languages which has a lot of profanities and their materials can have uh, some provoking themes as well uh, and and these people uh, uh, they hypothesize that uh, llms uh, might censor your content that is they will refuse to answer offensive prompts and and this will really uh, take away the core essence of 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 comedy uh, for a lot of comedians if let's say there is a lot of dark humor or offensive jokes at the heart of their uh, their comic routine then uh, uh, this uh, censorship by the llms will really hamper the way uh, the script is generated so so uh, these comedians typically use offensive jokes to punch up and and uh, satire that is to challenge existing social structures to build empathy rather than to punch down so so it's not used uh, to basically uh, put someone down but it's used as a satire to challenge existing social structures so if you have uh, seen some of uh, this comedy routines then then you might be understanding what i'm saying then these people also thought that uh, uh, llms will completely uh, miss the miss the context and and the context is really the key otherwise if you just hear something uh, or or if someone says something to you without knowing the context you might get offended right so uh, the joke should always be linked to the context properly otherwise it will not land and this is what they thought will happen and finally the content uh, will be homogenized which means that uh, uh, the ai generated artifacts may lead to a homogenization of uh, aesthetic styles for example if uh, there is a biasness towards a certain uh, ethnicity uh, then that will become an uh, homogenizing force and it will become a socially dominant one so uh, all of these uh, were the hypotheses which the authors had before they conducted the study and then finally uh, um, they write down what is the exact study they conduct and how they perform the study so basically they ran the workshop uh, with uh, 20 comedians um, and out of which the first workshop was uh, with 10 participants in person and uh, the following three workshops were done online um, they started uh, the three hour session by describing the agenda of the program and asking them to uh, basically uh, fill the information sheet and uh, uh, the context form the first exercise was the writing exercise in which uh, participants had to uh, engage in a comedy writing exercise uh, they spent around 45 minutes working with this large language model to develop a script uh, and uh, uh, the researchers invited them to use the language they felt comfortable with they used the tool to generate uh, explain jokes co-write jokes via iterative prompting and analyze rewrite or complete some of their previous material so it was used as kind of an assistant for generating uh, the script for the comedy routine and most of them uh, used uh, uh, chat gpt 3.5 uh, some of them also used gpt 4 or google bard powered by gemini pro and then uh, after that uh, they asked the participants to fill out a number of surveys uh, and and uh, the second survey was used to calculate the creativity support index so basically the more the creative support index the more uh, creative and and satisfying is uh, the script what, uh, which is generated with the help of ai so the csi has exploration expressiveness immersion enjoyment results etc and then finally there was uh, the focus group questions so now let's let's look at the results I hope you have understood the broader aim of this study and how this uh, study is conducted. Uh, basically, uh, uh, let's let's look at the output of this, right? So, uh, AI as a creativity support tool uh, for writing comedy. Uh, so, uh, most people, uh, let's say, if if you look at this question, whether the material written by AI is unique, most comedians disagree with this. They say the material is not unique. It's it's very common whether you enjoyed writing with ai yes so there is there there is a majority of people who say yes they they did enjoy they were not proud of the material written it was not very easy to write uh, with ai and uh, able to express my creative goals also it's not a very strong agree 
and the creativity support index you can see it's not very high uh, and it's 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 more high for people who uh, uh, you know have performed some material before if you look at uh, stand up comedians their creativity support Im- index or amateur their csi is low which means that people who are new to comedy they are not uh, finding ai very useful to them and this is what uh, they have written in in these paragraphs uh we can have a look at uh, some of uh, the actual descriptions of 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 these people you know so the first uh, learning is that uh, ai allows you to get that first draft immediately one participant said so it might be useful for uh, getting the first draft ready however the generated outputs are uh, generally of poor comedic quality so one one participant said it's the most bland boring thing i stopped reading it just consistently bad didn't really improve my jokes ai generated material has a lack of agency lacking that little bit of urgency that shows that it can be emotional uh, participants had difficulty steering llms away from bland and generic text uh, so this is also one of uh, the hypothesis which the people had that uh, it will not be able to create content which is uh, which is more context relevant and uh, which is a bit more uh, non diplomatic and then uh, human writer still produces the most humorous elements so usually it can serve in a setup capacity i more often than not provide the punchline so so it doesn't really help the comedians to provide the punchline and then uh, one of the major sections is the limitations which is introduced by moderation and safety uh, safety filtering so uh, they most of the comedians expressed a lot of uh, frustration in being unable to use llms to write about many themes common in comedy writing including a lot of uh, uh, suggestive material dark humor and offensive jokes uh, which is what was one of the hypothesis so it says uh, it probably would be more interesting for a writer if there was less moderation because you can do moderation in your own prompts a writer is going to moderate themselves if you are writing with an ai if you don't like the bad stuff it writes you won't use it it's it's interesting if there is less uh, uh, less moderation so generally comedians are preferring to use llms which has less moderation as moderation limits the writer's ability to use ai uh, with their preferred uh, subject matter i was a bit a little bit disappointed he says that uh, or uh, the participant says it wasn't a little bit offensive that it wasn't a little bit offensive it could have been a fun scene a lot of my stuff can have dark bits in it and then it wouldn't write me any dark stuff because it th- sort of thought i was going to commit suicide so it just stopped giving me anything so all of this is interesting and they also uh, observed marginalization of uh, minority entities which means that uh, we have a set of views that we think is good and norms and it just repeats it behaves within these norms Uh, when prompted to reflect non dominant identities llm makes shallow adjustments so for example uh, when i switched the whole conversation to indian language it didn't automatically change the names it was still maria so it it does not uh, identify with uh, marginalized entities or uh, native language uh, and and anything which is more specific to your context uh, it 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 is less useful to minorities by separ- uh, by suppressing the content so one participant gives gives an example it's taking out the gay language of it to make it more appealing or more palpable if this is the whole premise of my show who decides what is pc in the first place it's also politically correct i wrote a comedic monologue about asian women it says as an ai language i'm committing uh, i'm committed to fostering a respectful and uh, inclusive environment uncomfortable writing a monologue about an asian woman but i just asked it to write a comedy monologue from from a perspective of white man and it did it basically it didn't write the perspective from the point of view of, view of an asian woman but it did from the point of view of a white man so this is also interesting and all of this was brought out from this uh, interesting research study um and and the rest of it is also in the similar lines so basically uh what these people say is that uh, it is currently at a stage where uh, large language models are not extremely helpful uh, because they do not incorporate the context and humor and comedy uses of llms require incorporating the context 
there is also a uh, uh, like a appeal for decreasing the moderation of uh, large language models so that the output that you are generating for these specific use cases uh, can be helpful of course it has another side also if you don't moderate it it can be used for a lot of other things as well so it has to be it's a thin line which which we have to uh, navigate so essentially uh, this this uh, this was a very very uh, interesting study uh and and finally there are uh, three points which these people conclude with for the artist to conceptualize and contribute uh that are aligned with intended audiences instead of being globally aligned uh so open source repositories can be adapted for artist specific needs to integrate necessary relational context is is very useful and secondly to allow comedians to reclaim ownership of the tools and this is basically saying that you provide artists with the uh, more control of the content to not have a lot of moderations so it says these are thorny open questions left to the readers to address so uh, i hope you found this study interesting just go ahead and read this paper it's a it's a very fun read very interesting and easy to understand i'll be putting the link in the description also to the paper thank you very much everyone and we'll meet next time